One of the Caribbean's most potentially dangerous volcanoes has been displaying increased signs of unrest. What I'm referring to is the Soufriere Hills volcano on the island of Montserrat, which is immediately northwest of the more populous island of Guadalupe. The Soufriere Hills volcano awakened from a four-century-long period of inactivity in 1995, leading to a series of deadly eruptions which not only wiped out the island's capital Plymouth via repeated Superhia pyroclastic flows, but also rendered half of the island as uninhabitable. Although the Soufrier Hills volcano ceased its last eruption in early 2013, its lava dome is still highly unstable. If any part of this lava dome was to collapse, it could generate a long-reaching pyroclastic flow, which is why 58% of this beautiful island is closed off to everyone. Thus, you can see the potential concern about heightened volcanic unrest occurring. This unrest is not occurring through a rapid increase in gas emissions, earthquakes, and ground deformation like we recently witnessed in Iceland, but rather through a very slow and long-term increase. As a result of continuing long-term slow increases, the last 12 months have seen what the Montserrat Volcano Observatory describes as the most intense unrest since its last eruption ended in 2013. Since that eruption ended, a slow but steady uplift of the volcano has occurred in years since and is still ongoing, indicating the buildup of molten rock at one or both of its underlying magma chambers. As this has continued, the generated heat has progressed upwards, resulting in volcanic gas vents, aka fumaroles, being at elevated and ever-increasing temperatures since 2018. This same temperature increase has also affected the volcano's hydrothermal system, causing it to seep upwards into regional faults which then slip, generating volcano-tectonic earthquakes. These quakes, along with magmatic ones, have been increasing in abundance since 2019. Then, in September of 2023, during a week with an unusually high number of earthquakes, what is known as a long period earthquake occurred. While this quake could have been caused by the movement of the aforementioned hydrothermal system, it was likely, in my opinion, caused by the movement of magma. While seemingly insignificant, it suggests that for the first time in a decade that a section of Soufriere Hill's underlying magma chamber became sufficiently pressurized that magma was forced outwards or upwards, even though this only briefly occurred. Taking all of these symptoms into account, the logical conclusion is that pressure will continue to build in the underlying magma chamber, causing further increases of earthquakes and fumarole temperatures. Eventually, perhaps within only a few years, this pressure will become sufficient that magma shoots upwards and cracks overlying rock, causing another eruption to occur. While this might seem like a strange aspect to highlight given that it might, and I stress might, erupt in a few years' time, I am trying to point out to everyone to keep an eye on this volcano. Thus, if further increases in activity occur, you will understand that the Soufriere Hills volcano is progressively moving closer towards a potential future eruption. In a sense, I could almost compare the long-term activity at Soufriere Hills to the recent unrest observed at Mount St. Helens. Both volcanoes have in recent times produced large lava domes, have produced highly explosive eruptions, have produced lateral blasts, and are both are currently at a slightly increased level of volcanic unrest. The culprit for both is a slow influx of magma into their underlying magma chambers. While neither volcano is likely to erupt this year, I can truly say that we are closer to an eruption occurring at both volcanoes than we were 12 months ago. As a result of this activity, I place both Mount St. Helens and the Souvrier Hills volcanoes as a 1 on my 0 to 10 opinion based volcanic unrest scale. Both don't have immediately concerning levels of activity, but are acting in slightly abnormal manners. As a final note, I would like to thank my new patron Andrew Wazelik for supporting this channel.